threshold well, there's, that there's lots set. of hands up. Let's hear from the audience. The woman here in the front in the pink. Yes. Um, interesting what you're saying here. 68 million people now live in England going up, UN estimates. At what stage does the panel and people think this country has had enough? That we should close the borders, completely close the borders, because it's got to the stage now is there's no education, schooling, infrastructure. It's enough. We are sinking. Surely someone's got to see common sense and say enough is enough. You've got people flooding into this country that cannot speak English. I come from London, in the National Health Service, everything's written in different languages. How much is that costing? How much is it costing for the interpreters? <laughs> Sorry, madam, how much is it costing for the interpreters? I was in hospital last week, the interpreter never turned up for the people who couldn't speak English. She was paid, they all had to go on, and all the radiologists stood around doing nothing. What sort of country is allowing this? What sort of country is allowing this tourism to come in? You arrive in a plane, you get free service, you can have your babies, you can just carry on having it all for free. Why haven't they got points set up in the hospitals and you pay like you do in every other country you go to. You wouldn't okay. turn up in America let, and let be the allowed panel. to go for free. Let's let the panel answer some of those points. <coughs> Strongly made. Ash. Well, one thing is I wouldn't presume to know what kind of nonsense I get up to in America, but that's another story. On this matter of health tourism, what has been found is that migrants to this country mm -hmm. bring more and contribute more in tax than they take out of rubbish. the system. No, it's true. It's, it's a fact. Rubbish. It's a fact. Sorry, rubbish. facts don't care about your feelings. It's a fact. So, one, one is that migrants, particularly when they're young, they're working age, they're contributing to the private sector through the form of paying rent, through paying for their cost of living in this country, and also contributing to this country through taxes. When it comes to uh, Britain, we have an ageing population. So you've got more and more people who will age out of the workforce. And at the moment, with our birth rates, we don't have enough people ageing into the workforce to be able to support the kind of social care and pensions needs which are only going to grow. But one thing that I really want to say, because this is really okay. important to me, is I don't want to just make the case for migration on GDP and the labour force. I want to make the human case for it. My grandmother came to this country, she was 17, and it was to fill a gap in the labour market which still exists, which was for social care. Under these rules, she wouldn't have been able to come to this country. She wouldn't have been able to meet my grandfather, fall in love, have children, have some grandchildren. I know not many of you will agree that all of her grandchildren were a good okay. idea, but you know, we exist. Okay. But, uh, and that's a human briefly, story briefly, yeah. that's got worth and it's got a value which cannot be measured merely in GDP. I understand that, but why would you get preference for European countries uh, over, over other countries in the world?